How's it going guys? Chronic Rush here and welcome back to episode 8 of my FIFA 15 Road to France series. And first I'd like to apologise for not uploading enough videos, I know that for a fact. And um, I apologise that, but um, I'm getting back into the swing of things, I've got plenty stockpiled uh, for your viewing pleasures. Uh, we should be coming over the past week and I should be able to get on a cycle now where I can keep pumping out content for you guys. And um, I really, really appreciate all the support in all my series. The team of the week is doing fantastically well. Road to France is doing well as well. And I'm going to bring some squad builders back as well. So um, let's get straight into this episode. And um, as you can see, the player we're going to be going for is a gold non res striker, Gamero. Um, guys, if you're new to this series, go and check out episode one. It kind of gives you a rundown of everything that's happened. But basically, what it is, is a traditional road to gold. Depending if we lose or win the games, it uh, will depend on whether we upgrade or downgrade a player. If we lose, we have to downgrade. If we win, we have to upgrade and stuff like that. And we've got to complete a whole... Um, like category team before we can move on to the next one so a whole gold non-red team before we can move on to the gold rare players etc etc so let's get straight into the first game of this episode we come against Heskey FC and uh, he's going to have a BPL squad there two very very pacey strikers and it's a very very pacey defence as well and I wasn't looking forward to this game at all but the team I have with a silver um, silver rare cards with a couple of gold non-red cards it is quite hard when you come up against some fantastic BPL teams like you've seen on the screen uh, but we're going to pick up the ball here in midfield Nindobia finds a lovely pass into Mavuba. Quick one two between Cissé and he just uses his pace, goes around the play and puts a very, very nice finish around De Gea there. He's got to make that 1 0 there in the 45th minute. And I believe that was actually the final score 1 0. Men to secure the whole clean sheet for the rest of the game. And I'm really, really happy about that. Pioneer, the keeper, fantastic job out the back there. And um, he's, he's going to be one of the last players to go out. And as you can see there, we've got quite a bit of coins. Uh, that's because I believe we won the division. But um, as you can see there, it was a fairly even game in terms of shots and stuff like that. I just took that one chance I had and finished it very, very calmly. And then uh, just defended very, very well indeed. I feel like in FIFA, if you can defend very, very well, um, you at least be able to get a win or maybe get a like, counter attack. Because FIFA, you get so many dodgy goals. If you can just defend, hold out, you might be able to get an over-the-top ball into your players or stuff like that um, and uh, hopefully win the game for you. But um, as you can see there, we've got quite a bit of club maintenance before we can move on to the next player, which is going to be Gonalons to go and swap out the CDM player Mavu before. Um, but um, as you can see, we've got contract cards, injury on Morgan Shining. He seems to be getting injured all the flop in time. Um, I've, like, I, I've never had a set, like a couple of gaming sessions where I've done like, a whole group of games um, without him getting injured. I have to... Um, Play fitness games, I refuse to buy injury cards just because he always seems to get the leg injury as well, which seems to be the most expensive injury card available. Um, so um, I normally go out and play some fitness games, just it kind of um, kills two birds with one stone. Uh, you get fitness up on your team, um, and you also get rid of injuries and stuff like that. I do have that with red cards and stuff like that as well. Um, a very, very similar scenario. Uh, but um, as you can see there, um, we're gonna, we've are gonna we got swapped out Gamero into the um, attack force. And uh, he's going to be a very, very solid striker. I've used him before in a um, 10k Liga BVA squad builder, I believe. And um, did the job up top as well. Swapped him out for Dribble C. So he had a fantastic job up top. Um, I just swapped them out because they were light for light players. One of the fastest players, but strong. Um, decent dribbling, decent shooting, and we've still got Thialvi or Bifoma up front uh, with the pace if we do require that over the top ball. Um, but I'm um, going to have a quick look at injury cards. I believe I haven't. I may get lucky there. I think I just got lucky just because I had that one from a gold bronze pack or something. Uh, sorry, a bronze pack I picked up earlier on this episode. Uh, but so we can move into the second game of episode number eight. And as you can see, we're going to go for the CDM replacement of Gonalons. Um, hopefully, it's just going to bolster it up a bit more, um, meaning like we don't concede as many goals. We did do well last game, keeping that clean sheet, but um, um, especially against the team with the likes of Remy, any pacey striker seems to be a very, very threatening force, like always in FIFA, um, but um, when you've got uh, I don't know, silver defenders, gold non-red players, it doesn't work too well. We come against a 4-4-2 Celia Ass squad, Tevez and Ibarba up front, some pacey mother truckers, Quadrago, Jovino, Insigne, um, Barzagli, Castan. You've got some very, very good pacey players, and they don't go for a lot, which is kind of frustrating, um, because they're just so readily available, but um, I believe he's going to start off the scoring there um, in the fourth minute, and that's not a good time to concede, and um, he goes and puts another one in, I believe, and um, I'm actually not playing here, um, I had to go and do a job, and I hate when this happens. You've probably all had this, guys, where you, you think, oh, I'll get in a game of FIFA. I've got one game before I go to tea or something like that, or dinner. And your mum shouts down, and you realise you didn't have enough time. And I always do this thing where some people will be saying, why don't you just disconnect, completely disrupt the game. I knew I was only going to be down for maybe until, like, the first half. So I thought, if I put the munch down, um, got back up, I maybe had to see him 
secure this win or something and see what happens. But uh, as you can see, I'm actually playing here. He did score in three, which isn't too bad, to be fair. But um, we go straight back in, straight from half time, and put one into the back of the net. And I thought the comeback was on here, guys. And um, I thought it was like, I was proper pumped. Um, and then we get... Um, um, he brings it out for a keeper. We go and put that ball back in. Falls into the path of Tremolinas. And look for this a finish from the left back. I was not expecting a finesse shot there at all. I thought he was going to finesse it with his right foot around the keeper. But uses his left foot into the roof of the net. Um, but um, as you can see here, pick the ball up here. And um, that's such a dodgy pass. There was no one there. Didn't defend very well. Quadrogi just hangs off my player into Tevez there. And um, shit defending as well. And he's just going to go and score that. And there was plenty of time to me going and get an equaliser. And maybe even another one to score the win but he did end up finishing the game 4-2 picking up that win which was extremely extremely frustrating considering the fact that um I don't think he was too bad as you can see look at that I wasn't playing for about half a half 19 shots a 13 on target 50% possession I was pretty angry about that game just because I reckon I would have easily absolutely bashed him um if I didn't have to leave the controller uh, but that means we're gonna have to go for another downgrade and that means we're gonna have add another loss to the record a uh, record not too bad to be fair 19 and 4 um 23 games and um we seem to be tugging along a bit more um as you can see we've got four non-rare silver players in the squad and um we're actually going to have to downgrade one. So we're going to have a silver rare, not, sorry. We've got four silver rare cards and we're going to have a silver non-rare card now into the squad. Um, we're going to put Vanquit in the CDM spot. He's just going to fill that role in. He wasn't a bad play when I first used him in the very, very first episode. Um, so I thought he, I wasn't too bothered about that change. But um, normally when I get to the stage where I'm nearly completing like the whole gold non-red squad, it gets to a stage where I just cannot get this player. It's like a curse. I cannot get them. I keep winning the games. I get an upgrade to a silver rare player. Then I lose, then I win, then I lose, then I win, and eventually I will get the player, um, but uh, it depends how many losses I get before that, uh, but we go into the third and final game of this episode, guys, and come against another BPL squad, and uh, this was one of the most confusing squads in the world, he's got Moreno, Cahill, and Debushi at the back, with the three at the back, um, Remy, Walcott, and I was like, for fuck's sake, what is this pace all about, guys, I don't know why it's like people would want to play, I understand winning the game is all the important but um, that is a bad, bad start to the game. Tenth minute, and um, he gets a ball that ricochets off my keeper onto the bar and somehow trickles into the back of the bloody net uh, to go and make that 1-0, which was extremely frustrating. Then over the top ball, no pressure on his striker at all. Van Persie just easily controls that and easily puts that into the back on there. Then moving to the hour mark here, and um, I, there was just nothing going for me. I was lunging in tackles. Remy just waits for me to do that, turns me, and puts that into the back of the net to go and make that 3-0. And uh, that's the final result of the game. That's another win and, um, sorry, another loss. Um, and it's not going too well. As you can see there, it was just a frustrating game. Uh, we had fairly similar stats. I just didn't put anything in the back of there and everything he had. My defenders just seemed to be absolutely shocking. Um, so that's probably an area that I'm going to have to address um, in the next episode. As you can see, they're going to get another downgrade. Carla Borle is going to be swap out for Mirren, uh, the PSV centre-back. And, um... We just need a bolster defence, I feel. Um, I'm not liking any of my silver rare centre-backs too much. Maybe Dig Kite, maybe the next player we'll go for. Um, but um, I'm not too sure on that one. Guys, coming towards the end of this episode. Um, if you like, so remember that like button. Also remember to subscribe, stay tuned to the series. And if you're new here, guys, what do you think of this series? Put that in the comments. If you're new as well, go and check out episode one. Just for a full rundown of this series, guys. But it's coming towards the end of the episode. This has been Chris. Till next time. Adios.